Hey, are you interested to learn CSS animation? Then you are in right place. Hello, my name is Joyanto Shorkar. Professionally, I am full stack web developer and online instructor. Hey, if you want to enhance your CSS animation skill, then this course is for you. In this course, we are going to create a lot of CSS animation projects. Here I try to cover basic and advanced both type of animation projects. So let's take a tour what we are going to learn in this course. We are going to start our project series with this project. And our project name is CSS Animated Link Button. And then we are going to create CSS 3D Flip Hover Button. And here you can see the demonstration on your screen. And next we are going to create editable animated text with glowing effect. Here you can see the animation effect. Also the content is editable. You can type any text here. Next we are going to create this crazy animation. And our animation name is Animated Eyes Follow Mouse Cursor. In our next project we are going to create Web Circle Loader Animation Project. And here you can see the example. And in our next project we are going to create CSS 3D Layered Image Hover. And in our next project we are going to create CSS 3D Rotation Loader. And next we are going to create Rainy Cloud Animation Project. And here you can see the demonstration. So we are going to do some advanced animation projects here. There is no special requirement for this course. Just you have to basic knowledge of CSS and animation. And if you are not familiar with CSS animation, you can try out my another course. And remember one thing, this course has no specific end time. Because I am going to add in constantly new projects in this course. So what are you waiting for? Enroll this course now. Thanks for watching this video. Welcome back guys. This is our first exercise. And we are going to start our animation exercise with simple one. And in this tutorial, we are going to learn how we can create CSS animated link button. So let's see the output of this animation. So let me show you the output of our project. As you can see, there is a button. When I hover my cursor on it, you can see a sliding effect. Also you can see it's changed the text color. It's a very simple project, but effective one for beginners. So let me show you how we can create it. As you can see side by side, I open my Visual Studio Code Editor and my browser using live server extension. At first, I'm going to create an anchor tag in this document. So I'm going to type A. And I'm going to type some text. Click me. If I save this file, you can see the text in our browser. Click me. And also, I'm going to assign a class to this anchor tag. Class. And our class name is btn, means button. Then inside the head tag, I'm going to create style tag. Then inside the style tag, I'm going to create a selector using btn class dot btn. Then inside the curly braces, at first for our button class, I'm going to set a background color. So I'm going to type background here, background. And I'm going to take orange color for our background. If I save this file, you can see the result. And now I want to change the text color. So I'm going to type color, color white. If I save this file, you can see the result. If you notice, you can see an underline in this text. And now we need to remove the underline. For that, we need to use text decoration property. I'm going to type text decoration none. If I save this file, as you can see, it's removed our underline from the text. Now let's add some padding to this button. So I'm going to type padding, padding from top and button. I'm going to assign five pixel and from left and right, I'm going to assign 10 pixel. If I save this file, you can see the result. And if you want to add some paragraph above the button and below the button, in that case, you need to use display inline block. So I'm going to type display property, display inline block. If we do not use display inline property, then our padding can overlap with paragraph. For that reason, we need to use display value inline block. Now I want to increase the font size and I also change the font family. So I'm going to type font family here, font family, Arial. And also I'm going to increase the font size. So I'm going to type font size here, font size 22 pixel. 
If I save this file, now you clearly see our button. Click me. Now you can see the color in the background. When I hover my cursor, I want to animate this background color. I don't want to show this color without animation. I just want to show this color border of this button. For that, I'm going to comment out this property background. Then I'm going to type border. Border one pixel solid. And I'm going to use orange red color for border. If I save this file, you can see the result. And also I'm going to change the font color. I'm going to use the same color for font, orange red. If I save this file, now you can see only border and the text. And now I want to give a sliding effect using animation. For that, I'm going to create a pseudo selector dot btn after. Then inside the curly braces, at first, I'm going to set a background color. So I'm going to type background. And I'm going to use the same color for background, orange red. And then we need to position it. So I'm going to type position property, position absolute. And if we use after value, we need to remove our content. For that, I'm going to type content double quotes. We need to leave it blank. If we use after and before pseudo selector. As you can see, for after, we use absolute position. So I'm going to use position relative in our parent container. Position relative. After position, we need to pass top and left value. So I'm going to type top 0, left 0. And then I'm going to set width and height for our after selector. So first I'm going to type width. Width 100%. And then also I'm going to set height. Height 100%. If I set this file, as you can see, our after element cover our whole button. So for now I'm going to set 0% width. And now we need to create the hover effect of btn class. For that, I'm going to type dot btn and I'm going to create a hover selector. Then inside the curly braces, at first I'm going to change the button text color. When I hover my cursor on this button, I want to change button text color. So I'm going to type color white. Then I'm going to duplicate this hover selector with btn class. And now I'm going to create hover selector with after. Hover colon after. In this selector, I want to extend the width. So I'm going to type width 100%. If I save this file and hover my cursor on this button, you can see the effect. But you cannot see the sliding effect. And also you cannot see the text. Because we need to move the after container behind the text. For that, we need to use Z index. So I'm going to type Z index minus one. If I set this file and hover my cursor on this button, you can see the effect. So here you can see when I hover my cursor on it, it changes the text color. With that, it increased after selector with 100% from 0% to 100%. And now we need to use transition for our animation. So we need to use this transition in our parent class. So inside the btn class, I'm going to type transition. Transition all. I want to apply this transition in all transformation. That's why I use all value. And then we need to pass transition duration time. So I'm going to pass 0 0.5 second. And then we need to pass transition mode, which is is. I'm going to use is value. And also I'm going to pass transition delay value. For that, I'm going to use zero second. If I save this file, it's going to effect text only. If I hover my cursor on it, you can see the effect. You can see the transition effect on our text, not the background color. So to get this sliding effect, we need to use this transition in our after selector. So I will copy this transition and paste it here. If I save this file and hover my cursor on it, you can see the result. 
So we successfully create our animated link button. We do not use any CSS keyframe for that. Hey, this exercise is not a very difficult one. Because I want to start this animation projects with a very simple transition effects, not the CSS keyframes. From our next project, we are going to jump into the difficult one. So thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for our next exercise. Good to see you back guys. Once again, I'm back with a new exciting animation project. And in this project, we are going to create 3D flip hover button. So without wasting your time, let's see the demonstration. As you can see, there is a button. If I hover my cursor on it, you can see the result. Here you can see the opposite part of this button. It flipped the button and return a new text. Click here. It's a hover effect animation button, but it is pretty advanced. So without wasting your time, let's start the practical and see how it's work. As you can see, side by side, I open my Visual Studio Code Editor and my browser using Live Server extension. And also you can see, I already create a HTML document named index.html. With that, I create a CSS file, style.css. And as you can see, I link this style file with this HTML document. So at first, I'm going to create an anchor tag inside the body tag. So I'm going to type A. By default, I don't want to redirect it. So I want to use hashtag. Now, inside this anchor tag, I'm going to create three new span tag. Span class front. Then, I'm going to duplicate this span tag two times. Our first span class name is front. And our second span class name is center. So, I'm going to type center. And our last span class name is back. So, I'm going to type back. Then in our front side, I'm going to type click. And in our back side, I'm going to type hair. And for our center span tag, I want to leave it blank. So if I set this file, as you can see, as you can see in my browser, here it's print click hair, top left corner of this browser. So we successfully done our HTML part. So let's move to the CSS file and style this page. At first, I'm going to style our body tag. So I'm going to type body. Inside the curly braces, I'm going to set margin 0. Margin 0. And also I want to set padding 0. Padding 0. And then I'm going to use font family property. So I'm going to type font family sans it. And also I'm going to set a dark background color to our body. Background. And I'm going to use hexa value. Hash. 262626. Six, two, six. If I set this file, you can see the result. As you can see in my browser, now our background color is dark gray. And now we need to style this anchor tag. Inside the anchor tag, we have total three span tag. So let's style the anchor tag. So I'm going to select A inside the curly braces. At first, I'm going to use position property. Position. Position absolute. And now I want to align this anchor tag middle of this page. For that, I'm going to use top property, top 50%. Then I'm going to use left property, left 50%. If I save this file, you can see the result. As you can see, it align our anchor tag middle of this web page. Next, I'm going to use transform property. So I'm going to type transform here, transform, transform, translate. As you know, using translate method, we can move an element from its current position according to x axis and y axis. So for x axis, I'm going to pass minus 50%. And for y axis, also I'm going to pass minus 50%. And then I'm going to set height and width to this anchor tag. At first, I'm going to type width. Width 200 pixel. And then I'm going to set height property, height. Height 60 pixel. If I set this file, you can see the result. And then I'm going to set text align center. Text align center. As you know, we are going to create a 3D hover button. For that, we need to use another property, which is transform style. So I'm going to type transform style. Transform style. And here I'm going to use preserve 3D value. This property specify how nested elements are rendered in 3D space. And as you know, we need to use this property with transform property, 
without transform property we cannot use this property we learned about it in our tutorial series and then i'm going to use another property which is prospective prospective 1000 pixel and also i'm going to set transform origin position transform origin center center if i set this file as you can see now it perfectly align our content middle of this web page we cannot understand this prospective and 3d transformation because we do not style our span object so now we need to style our span object as you can see we have total three span object so let's style all the object at once for that i'm going to select span tag span inside the curly braces at first i'm going to type position property position absolute next we need to align this span tag so top 0 left 0 and also i'm going to set height and width height 100% width 100% and then i'm going to use display block display block and also i'm going to align the text inside the span tag so i'm going to type text align text align center and then i'm going to set line height line height 60 pixel if i set this file here you can see it overlap our text next i'm going to set font size font size 24 pixel and also i'm going to set a background color to this span tag background i'm going to use rgba value rgb as you know first we need to pass red value then we need to pass green value at last blue value with that we need to pass alpha value we can control the transparency using alpha value that's why we need to use this value so here i'm going to pass 255 for red 255 and then i'm going to pass once again 255 for green and also 255 for blue and for our alpha value i'm going to pass point 10 and now we need to change the transform style so i'm going to type transform style transform style preserve 3d now i don't want to show the back side of our span tag when it rotate we don't want to show the back side for that we need to use a property and you know that which is backspace visibility back backspace visibility and i'm going to set hidden value because i don't want to show the back side and then i'm going to set the border radius of the span tag border radius 30 pixel our next property is text transform Next I want to transform the text into a upper case for that I'm going to use text transform property text transform upper case next I'm going to set a color to our text color white if I save this file you can see the result with that I want to set transition property transition 1 second as you know we have total three span object inside the anchor tag so i'm going to transform all the span tag differently at first i'm going to transform the front one and then i'm going to transform the back one at last i'm going to transform the center one and we are going to run the transformation using hover selector so let's back to the css file and start with our first span tag so i'm going to type span dot front Then inside the curly braces, I'm going to use transform property, transform, transform, rotate x, and I want to rotate it zero degree. With that, I want to move it at z axis direction. So I'm going to type translate z twenty pixel. If I save this file, you cannot see the result because I want to make this transformation when I hover my cursor on this button. Now I want to rotate this button when I hover on it. For that, we need to create a hover selector. So I'm going to duplicate this line and 
and I'm going to type anchor tag colon hover. So when I hover my cursor, I want to rotate our front span tag minus 180 degree. If I save this file and hover my cursor on it, you can see the result. You can see our first span tag rotate minus 180 degree. Same thing we need to do for our back span tag. So I'm going to select this code and duplicate this line. So here I'm going to type span dot back. By default, I want to rotate it 180 degree. And I'm going to use same value, translate z 20 pixel. And in our hover selector, I want to rotate it 0 degree. Back. And I want to rotate it 0. If I save this file and hover my cursor on it, now you can see the rotating 3D effect. And now I want to set a background color for our center span tag. This one. For that, I'm going to type span dot center. Inside the curly braces, I'm going to use background property. Background and I'm going to use gradient color. And I'm going to use linear gradient. And I'm going to use left direction. So I'm going to pass to left comma and now I'm going to use hexacolor value hashtag C 31 A 5 B it's a pink color and our next color is hashtag 7129 BD it's a purple color if I set this file you can see the result now for our center span object I want to turn on backspace visibility so I'm going to type backspace visibility and I'm going to use visible value and then I'm going to create hover selector for our center span tag and I'm going to remove front keyword and I'm going to type center for rotate x I'm going to use minus 180 degree but for translate z I'm going to use 0 pixel if I save this file and hover my cursor on this button you can see the 3D effect. So we successfully create 3D flip hover button. I hope you like this project. Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for our next exercise. Nice to see you back guys. Again I am back with a new exciting animation project. And in this project we are going to create editable animated text with CSS glowing effect. So let's back to the computer screen and see the demonstration. Here you can see how our text is glowing. And also you can see the reflection of this text. Not only that, also our text is editable. Let me show you. Suppose if you want to type your name, you can remove the text from this place and you can type your name. It's a very good practice and example of CSS animation. You can use this animation on your website. It can give your website very creative look. So without further talk, let's start the project and see how we can create it. As you can see, side by side, I open my Visual Studio Code editor and my browser using Live Server extension. And I already created a HTML document named index.html. With that, I link a CSS file, style.css. So at first, inside the body tag, I'm going to create a header tag, h2 header. And inside this tag, for now, I'm going to type text. If I save this file, you can see the result, text. It is a static content. We cannot edit it from our browser. And if you want to make it editable content, in that case, we need to use a attribute and our attribute name is content editable. Let me show you. So here I'm going to type content editable. And I want to make it true. If I make it true and then save this file, now we can edit our content from our browser. Let me show you. I want to convert text to name. You can see the result. So we successfully done our HTML part. Let's jump into the our design part. So I'm going to jump CSS file, style.css. At first, I'm going to use universal selector. So I'm going to type star. Inside the curly braces, I want to set margin. Margin zero. With that, also I want to set padding. Padding 0. And also, I want to use box sizing property. Box 
sizing, box sizing, border box. And then I'm going to use font family, font family, font family, and I'm going to use Arial font. Arial, have a and sans serif. If I save this file, you can see the result. Next, I want to style our body tag, body. Inside the curly braces, I want to start with display property, display, display flex. Hey, if you are not familiar with flex and read, you can check out my course. Then justify content center. And also I want to align this item center. So I'm going to use align item property, align item center. Our next property is minimum height. We need to set minimum height, min height, minimum height. I want to use 100 VH. With that, I want to set dark background color, background and I'm going to use RGVA value. For red, I'm going to use 5. For green, I'm going to use 30. And for blue, I'm going to use 71. If I save this file, you can see the color. You can see the dark bluish background color. And also it center our content middle of this page because we use flexbox to align our content. And then come the most important part, h2 heading tag design, h2 inside the curly braces, our first property is position, position relative. And our second property is font size, font size 6 em. If I save this file, you can see the result. With that, I want to set letter spacing, letter spacing, letter spacing, 15 pixel. Our next property is color, means font color, color, and I'm going to use RGV value. For red, I'm going to use four. For green, I'm going to use 50. And for blue, I'm going to use 124. If I set this file, you can see the result. This color is pretty identical with background color. And now I'm going to transform this text into uppercase. Text transform uppercase. If I set this file, you can see the result. And then I'm going to set width. Width 100%. Text align center. And then come the very important part of this video. Now we need to reflect this text. I want to create a mirror reflection. For that, we need to use a new property named box reflect. Let me show you. Hey, as you can see, I work with Chrome browser. That's why we need to use a prefix dash webkit dash our property name box reflect dash reflect. At first we need to declare the direction of our reflection which is below and then we need to provide the length of this reflection which is one pixel. If I save this file you can see the result. It create a perfect reflection of our text. Our first value is reflection direction value. Our second value is offset value and third we need to provide the mugs value. And for max value, I'm going to use linear gradient. So here I'm going to type linear dash gradient. Inside the parenthesis, our first value is transparent. And our second value is RGVA. And inside the parenthesis, we need to provide the RGVA value. But at first, I'm going to turn on the word wrap. And now I'm going to pass the value. Our first value is red value. For red, I'm going to use 11. And for green, I'm going to use 70. And for blue, I'm going to use 138. At last, we need to pass the alpha value. And as you know, alpha value is used for transparency. So for alpha value, I'm going to use 0 0.267. 
if I set this file, you can see the result. Then I'm going to use semicolon to end this line. Our next property is line height. Line height. For line height, I'm going to use 0 0.70 em. And next, I want to turn on the outline of this text. So I'm going to use outline property. Outline none. If I set this file, you can see the result. After removing the outline, our reflection attached with our content. Now our reflection looks realistic. And then come our final part, which is animation. So at first, I want to create a keyframe. At the rate, keyframes. And our animation name is animate. Then inside the curly braces, as you know, we have total two type of keyframe selector. You can use from or to keyword, otherwise you can use percentage value. For this example, we need to go with percentage value. Not only, we need to work with multiple percentage value. And I already prepared the percentage value for this example. So I'm going to copy it and I want to paste it here. Paste. Then inside the curly braces, we need to use our property. At first, I want to change the text color. So I'm going to use color value. Color, and I'm going to use RGV value. And I use the same color which I use in our heading tag. Our next property is text shadow. So I'm going to type text shadow. Text shadow none. As you can see, I apply this property 0% of animation, 18% of animation, 20% of animation, 50.1% of animation, 60% of animation, 65.1% of animation, 80% of animation, 90.1% of animation, and 92% animation. Now let's call the animation and try to see is it work properly or not. So I want to use animation property animation and our animation name is animate and our animation duration time is one second and our animation direction is linear and for our animation duration time I'm going to use infinite value infinite. If I save this file, let's see what happened. As you can see, nothing is happening. Because to create the glowing effect, we need to play with text shadow value. So for that, we need to use some more percentage selector. So I already copied the percentage selector and I'm going to paste it here. Then inside the curly braces, I'm going to use color property. Color, color white, hashtag FFF. And now we need to play with text shadow property. So I'm going to type text shadow, text shadow, at first, you need to pass the x-axis value, which is 0. And then you need to pass the y-axis value. I'm going to use 0. And third, you need to pass the blurriness value. So here, I'm going to use 10 pixels. At last, you need to pass the shadow color. For shadow color, I'm going to use RGB value. RGB, inside the parenthesis, I'm going to type red value 6, green value 149, and, and blue value 231. If I save this file, you can see the result. You can see how it is blink. Also, you can see the reflection. And now I want to create this effect more attractive. So I'm going to duplicate this line, copy, comma. In the next line, I want to duplicate this line. And now I just want to increase the blur value, 20 pixel. If I save this file, you can see the result. Now you can see a glowing light effect edge of this text. So after comma, I want to duplicate this line. And once again, I want to increase the value of blurness, 40 pixel. Then once again, I want to duplicate this line. And now I'm going to use 80 pixel. At last, I'm going to use 160 pixel. If I remove the last comma and save this file, you can see the effect. As you can see, now our glowing effect look more attractive. Not only that, it is also editable. Suppose you want to type your name. So I'm going to remove this one and I'm going to type Smith. You can type any text here because we use editable content. As you can see, content editable true. So I hope now it's clear for you how we can create this glowing effect. So thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for our next project. Good to see you back guys. Once again, I'm back with a new exciting CSS animation project. And our project name is animated eyes follow mouse cursor. 
so let's see the demonstration here you can see a face and if you notice you can see its eyes follow the cursor point if i move it right side of this page you can see it's follow and if i move it upside of this face it's also follow and if i hover my cursor on this face you can see it's change the mouth reaction so let's see how we can create this project as you can see side by side i open my visual studio code editor and my browser using live server extension and i already create a html document named index.html and i already link this html document with the css file style.css so at first inside the body tag i'm going to create a div div class and our class name is face at first i want to create the face then inside this div tag i'm going to create another div div class eyes in this section we are going to create eyes of our face then inside this eyes section we are going to create two eyes div class i and i'm going to duplicate this line so we successfully done our html part first we create a tag for face then inside this face tag we create a block for eyes and then we take to another div tag for two eyes now let's jump into the style section at first i'm going to take a universal selector star so inside the curly braces at first i'm going to use margin property margin 0 and then i'm going to use padding property padding 0 and box sizing border box next i'm going to style the body tag body inside the curly braces display flex justify content center i use flex container to align our face center of this page next i'm going to use align item property align items center minimum height mean height 100 vh i want to use whole web page that's why i use 100 vh and our last property is background background for background color i'm going to use rgb value rgb for red i'm going to use 8 and for green i'm going to use 84 value and for blue i'm going to use 139 if i save this file you can see the background color for this project i'm going to use dark blue background color and now i want to style the face part so i'm going to style dot face inside the curly braces at first i'm going to use position property position relative and our next property is width width 300 pixel and also i want to set height height 300 pixel also Our next property is background. Background and once again I'm going to use RGB value. RGB for red value I'm going to use 255. For green value I'm going to use 198 and for blue value I'm going to use 54. If I save this file you can see the square box on your screen. And now we need to convert this square shape into a round shape. for that i'm going to use border radius property border radius 50% if i save this file you can see the result and also i'm going to use display property display flex justify content center and also i'm going to use align item property center Hey if you are not familiar with CSS flexbox and grid you can check out my responsive CSS course so we successfully shape our face now we need to put mouth in this face for that i'm going to create dot face colon colon before selector before then inside the curly braces as you already know first we need to take a blank property and our property name is content content blank then then our next property is position position absolute 
and then I'm going to set height and width with 150 pixel height 70 pixel and now I'm going to take background color background chocolate if I set this file you can see a rectangular shape middle of this face and now we need to move this face little bit down for that I'm going to use top value top 180 pixel if I set this file you can see the result here you can see our mouth look like a square box and to create a perfect mouth shape we need to use border radius property at first I want to set a border radius in this corner for that I'm going to use border bottom left radius border bottom left radius and I'm going to use 70 pixel if I set this file, you can see the result. And then I'm going to duplicate this line and replace left with right. If I set this file, here you can see it create a smile shape. And now I want to change the mouth motion when I hover my cursor on it. For that, we need to create another selector. Let me show you. Dot face colon hover colon before inside the curly braces I'm going to reuse this value and property so I'm going to copy the property and value and paste it here now one by one I'm going to replace these values first I'm going to change top value to 10 pixel if I save this file and hover my cursor on it you can see the difference it's changed the position of mouth and next I'm going to change this border radius border bottom left radius 0 also border bottom right radius 0 if I set this file and hover my cursor on it you can see the difference but there is no transition in this transformation for that we need to use transition property so here I'm going to type transition transition 0 0.5 second if I set this file and hover my cursor on it you can see the transition effect it takes 0.5 seconds to complete the transformation so we successfully complete our mouth section let's jump into the eyes section as you can see inside the eyes container we have two eye so let's create the eyes of this face so at first I'm going to style eyes section dot eyes then inside the curly braces position relative and I want to position it top minus 40 pixel and I'm going to use display property display flex using this property and values we successfully move our eye section in that place not the middle of this face and then we need to create the eye so I'm going to select eyes class also I'm going to select eye class then inside the curly braces our first property is position position relative and also I'm going to set height and width for this eye width 80 pixel height 80 pixel after width and height I'm going to set background color background white if I set this file you can see the result basically side by side it create two square box with 80 pixel width and height and then I'm going to use display property display block and next I'm going to use border radius property border radius 50% if I set this file you can see the difference here you can see side by side it create two eyeballs but there is no gap between two eyeballs so for that I'm going to use margin property margin 0 and 15 pixel if I set this file you can see the difference overall this margin value provide 30 pixel space between these two eyes and now we need to create the eyeballs for these eyes so at first I'm going to copy this line and I'm going to paste it here with eye I'm going to use before selector colon colon before then inside the curly braces as you know first we need to create a blank content content 
blank our next property is position position absolute and also we need to place it so i'm going to use top value top 50 percent left 25 pixel and for our eyeballs i'm going to set width 40 pixel also height 40 pixel and next i'm going to use background color for our eyeball background and i'm going to use rgv value rgv for green i'm going to pass 42 then for red i'm going to pass 42 once again also for blue i'm going to pass 42 if i save this file you can see the result as you can see it create two dark gray square box but we need to make it round shape so i'm going to use border radius value border radius 50 percent if i set this file you can see the result here you can see our eyes look downs in that angle but i want to change the eyes looking angle something in that position for that i'm going to use transform property transform translate minus 50 percent for x axis also minus 50 percent for y axis if i set this file you can see the result now it's look in that angle if i hover my cursor in this emoji face you can see the reaction but the eyes ball do not follow the cursor position for that we need to use javascript so we successfully complete our styling part in the next part of this video we are going to work with javascript so thanks for watching this video stay tuned for the next part nice to see you back guys again i am back with a new css animation project and in this project we are going to create web circle loader animation so let's back to my computer screen and see the demonstration here you can see it create a very beautiful effect of wave using 3d circles so let's see how we can create this animation so as you can see side by side i open my visual studio core editor and my browser using live server extension and i already create a html document named index.html also i link this document with the style.css file so at first inside my body tag i'm going to take a div tag div and also i'm going to set a class to this div class loader then inside the div tag i'm going to take multiple span tag span basically i'm going to take empty span tag to create some circles for this project i'm going to take 15 span tag so i'm going to duplicate this line 14 time we have total 15 span tag for 15 circles so we successfully done our html part now let's jump into the css file style.css so here at first i'm going to select universal selector which is star then inside the curly braces i'm going to use margin property margin zero and then i'm going to use padding property padding zero then i save this file and next i'm going to select the body tag so here i'm going to type body then inside the curly braces at first i'm going to use display property display flex justify content center our next property is align item it is also center and then i'm going to set minimum height to our web page for that i'm going to use mean height property m i n height mean height 100 vh i want to select whole page for this project that's why i use 100 vh our next property is background background and for background i'm going to use rgb value rgb for red i'm going to type 70 similar for green i'm going to type also 70 and for our blue value i'm going to type 70 if i save this file here you can see our background color is dark gray and now i'm going to style the loader class so i'm going to select dot loader inside the curly braces at first i'm going to use position property position relative 
Also, I'm going to set height and width to this loader. Width, 300 pixel. And height, 300 pixel also. And now, I'm going to use the most important property, which is transform style. Transform style. In our transform style property, I'm going to use preserve 3D value because I want to give our circle 3D look. Our next property is transform. Transform. Our first value is perspective. Perspective 500 pixel. And our next value is rotate x value. Rotate x. Here I'm going to pass angle 60 degree. Next, I'm going to style all this pen tag inside the loader class. So here I'm going to type dot loader space. I'm going to select all this pen tag span. Then inside the curly braces, our first property is position. Position absolute. Our next property is display. Display block. And now I'm going to set border to our span tag. Border 5 pixel. I'm going to set border with 5 pixel. And I want solid border. And our border color is white. So I'm going to type FFF. If I save this file, you can see the result. Here you can see just it create multiple boxes at the same place. For now, it's not clear for us. So our next property is box shadow box shadow and i'm going to position this shadow 0 pixel 5 pixel and 0 pixel and also i'm going to use a color for this box shadow hashtag ccc it's provide light gray color to our shadow now comma with that value i want to use another value which is inset also i want to set shadow inside part of the strings that's why I use insert value. And then I'm going to copy the value and I'm going to paste it here. And I'm going to save this file. Our next property is box sizing. Box sizing. And here I'm going to use border box value. And also I'm going to use another property which is border radius. Border radius. Border radius 50%. If I save this file, you can see the result. I know it is still not clear for you. And now I'm going to increase the circle size one by one. For that, we need to select all the span tag one by one. So let's select all the span tag one by one. So I'm going to type dot loader or span tag span colon. And now I'm going to use nth child selector nth child. At first, I'm going to select our first span tag. So I'm going to type one here. Then inside the curly braces, we need to position our first span tag. So at first, I'm going to use top property, top zero. Our next property is left, left also zero. And then come our another property, which is bottom, bottom also zero. And our last positioning property is right. Right, also zero. With that, I'm going to use another property which is animation delay. Animation delay. For now, I'm going to leave it blank. I will tell you later why I use this property. If I save this file, as you can see, it create our first circle. And this is the biggest circle from our group. And to create our second circle, I'm going to duplicate this whole section. At first, I'm going to change the selector, nth child 2. With that, I'm going to change top value, left value, bottom value, and right value. Let me show you. Top 10, left 10, bottom position 10, right position 10. If I save this file, here you can see nothing is happening here. It do not create another circle because we do not provide any unit. Here we need to provide unit. So I'm going to provide pixel here, 10 pixel, 10 pixel, and 10 pixel. If I set this file, now you can see the result. There is another circle inside this circle. 
then one by one I'm going to create this circle so I'm going to duplicate this section and here I'm going to select n child 3 and also I'm going to increase the position values 20 pixel 20 pixel for bottom and 20 pixel for right if I set this file you can see the result it add third circle in this group and now I'm going to fast forward this section to complete the process So as you can see, we complete the creation process. If I save this file, you can see the result. You can see all the circles are aligned perfectly. And here you can see, and here you can see every time I add 10 pixel value to our previous value. In our 13 selector, we use top value 120 pixel. But in our next selector, means in our 14 selector, we use 130 value. In that way, in our 15 selector, we add 10 pixel and we pass 140 value. So we successfully create our circle. Now we need to animate it. Just we need to play with the Z index value to create the wave. So let's create a keyframe for this animation. So I'm back to the top section and here I'm going to create the keyframe. At the rate keyframe. And then we need to type the keyframe name and our keyframe name is animate. Then inside the curly braces, we need to select the position. To select the position of animation, I'm going to use percentage value. First, I'm going to select two position, 0% position and 100% position. Then inside the curly braces, at that position, I want to transform these circles. So here I'm going to use a property named transform. Transform and I'm going to use translate Z value. Translate Z. And I want to translate it minus 100 pixel at z-axis direction. And next I'm going to select 50% position, 50%. Then inside the curly braces, once again I'm going to use transform property. Transform, translate z, 100 pixel. And now we need to call this animation in our span tag. So here I'm going to type animation our animation name is animate and I want to run this animation for 3 seconds. With that also I want to set is in out animation mode. At last I am going to pass animation iteration count value which is infinite. If I save this file as you can see all the circles move together up and down because we use z index value. So here you can see it's move all the circle together at the same time. Now we need to use delay property, animation delay. Using this property, we can delay our animation and it's very necessary to create the wavy circle. So here, at first, I'm going to use 1.4 second delay. If I save this file, as you can see, after 1.4 second, it start the animation for our first child. Similarly, for our second child, I'm going to pass 1.3 second. And for our third child, I'm going to pass 1.3 2 second and for our fourth I'm going to pass 1.1 second and for our fifth child I'm going to pass 1 second and for our sixth child I'm going to pass 0 0.9 second for our seventh child I'm going to pass 0 0.8 second and for our eighth child I'm going to pass 0 0.7 second and for our ninth child I'm going to pass 0 0.6 second for our 10, I'm going to pass 0 0.5 second. For our 11 child, I'm going to pass 0 0.4 second. For our 12 child, I'm going to pass 0 0.3 second. For our 13 child, I'm going to pass 0 0.2 second. And for the 14 span selector, I'm going to pass 0 0.1 second. And for our last one, I'm going to pass 0 second delay. So we successfully set animation delay property all of this pan tag. So if I save this file, now you can see the result. As you can see, now it create perfect web circles. And now it's look pretty amazing. 
it's created a very beautiful effect of waves so i hope now it's clear for you how we can create this wave circle animation so thanks for watching this video stay tuned for our next project hello again i'm back with a new css animation project and in this project we are going to create css 3d layer image hover and it is a good project for ui ux designer so let's see the demonstration let's back to the computer screen as you can see there is a mobile ui template if I hover my cursor on it, you can see a layer 3D effect. You can see this kind of animation most of the website. It create our website more attractive. So let's see how we can create this project. So finally, I am in my Visual Studio Code editor. And as you can see, I already create a HTML document named index.html. And I already link a CSS file with our HTML document style.css. And as you can see, in my current working directory, there is an image, screenshot.jpg. Let me show you the image. For this example, I already take a screenshot of CS file explorer. You can choose your own layout. It's up to you. So let's start the practical and see how we can create this project. At first, I'm going to create a container inside my body tag. So here, I'm going to type div and our div class is class container. And then inside this container class, I'm going to use image tag to insert image. So here I'm going to type image img. And as you can see, our image name is screenshot.jpg. So here I'm going to type screenshot jpg. And I'm going to duplicate this image tag three times. So we successfully done our HTML part for this example. And now I'm going to turn on my live server and see how it's look. So without styling, it's look like this. And now we need to jump into the style file to create the perfect design. Now you can see side by side, I open my style file and my browser. At first, I'm going to start with body tag. So here I'm going to type body. Then inside the curly braces, I'm going to use our first property, which is margin, margin zero. Our next property is padding, padding zero. And now